Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome to a new episode of the end of days. Talking about Kitabul Fitani wa Ashrat al Sa'a, the chapter of tribulations and the coming of the hour in Sahih Muslim, or some of the ahadith at least. We spoke in the previous episode, at least in the second half, regarding the hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu anhu. And I just want to continue that a little bit in this episode just to talk about a few more points which relate to the hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu anhu and what Hudayfa said. We have a new wording of the hadith that I want to cover with you now. We can continue to talk about it and remind ourselves what we learned last time. An Hudayfa radiallahu anhu Annahu qal Qama fina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Maqaman ma taraka shay'a Yakunu fi maqamihi thalik the Prophet وسلم, stood and spoke among us. He addressed us in a gathering and he did not leave anything in that gathering that would happen until the day of judgment except that he informed us of it. I.e. the trials and tribulations and the big events that would happen, the Prophet وسلم, told us all of them. Hafidahu man hafidah. Wanasiyahu man nasiyah. The one who memorized, memorized. And the one who forgot, forgot. So Hudayfa, the secret keeper of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed them. And when he addressed them, he told them of all of the tribulations and the signs of the hour that would come from the time he stood on the mimbar until the day of judgment. Hafidahu man hafidah wa nasiyahu man nasiyah. The one who memorized it memorized and the one who forgot forgot. I.e. not all of us memorized everything and not all of us forgot everything but we memorized what we memorized and we forgot what we forgot. Qad alimahu ashabi ha'ula. These companions of mine knew of it. This was not something I knew alone. These companions of mine knew of it. وَإِنَّهُ لَيَكُونُ مِنْهُ الشَّيْءِ فَأَرَاهُ فَأَذْكُرَهُ كَمَا يَذْكُرُ الرَّجُلُ وَجْهَ الرَّجُلِ إِذَا غَابَ عَنْهُ ثُمَّ إِذَا رَآهُ عَرَفَهُ He said, and there is something of it. There is something of what the Prophet وسلم, said, قَدْ نَسِيتُهُ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَكُونُ مِنْهُ الشَّيْءِ قَدْ نَسِيتُهُ فَأَذْكُرُهُ كَمَا يَذْكُرُ الرَّجُلُ وَجْهَ الرَّجُلِ إِذَا غَابَ أَنْهُ ثُمَّ إِذَا رَآهُ عَرَفَهُ Hudayfa رضي الله عنه said And there was some of what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that I forgot But I remember it when I see it Just like a man who sees the face of another man. When that man is away from him a long time, he doesn't remember his face. But as soon as he sees him again, he remembers his face. So Hudayfa radiallahu anhu is saying that he forgot in memory the entire list of trials and tribulations, i.e. he could not keep in memory the entire list of trials and tribulations. However, as soon as one of them happened in his lifetime, he recognized it like when you know the face of somebody, but when they're away from you a long time, you forget about their face. And then as soon as you see them again, you remember. So this tells us that many of these trials and tribulations happen during the life of Hudayfa radiallahu an, And that every time one would happen, Hudayfa would recognize that one of them happened and he would remember that this was one of the trials the Prophet ﷺ taught us about. And this gives us a number of benefits. From the benefits is that the Prophet ﷺ prepared his companions for what would come. From the benefits of this is that if you prepare people for the signs of the end of days and the coming of the hour, they may not remember every last detail. They may not be able to recall the characteristics of the Dajjal one by one by one from memory. But for certain when they see him, they will recall these characteristics like the person who 
forgets the face of someone, but when they see them, they remember that face. So yes, your children may not remember every last detail. The companions didn't remember every single last detail. But what they did do is as soon as these trials and tribulations came up again, they recognized them and they were able to take appropriate action to avoid them. So this also shows us the great importance of a Muslim knowing how to avoid trials and tribulations and knowing tribulations, what they're going to be like, what sort of things will happen especially the major tribulations. Of course, Hudayfa said, Minha kibarun wa minha sigar. From those tribulations were those that were huge. From them are those that were small. From them are those that were like the summer winds, i.e. one coming after another, after another, hitting you hard and fast. Some of them spaced out, but the companions were taught how to deal with them. And even if they forgot the details, they remembered them as soon as they saw them happening. And this is an important methodology when it comes to teaching ourselves, our children, trials and tribulations. We may forget from time to time, but the minimum that we want is that when these things happen to us, we recognize them and we can take corrective action to keep ourselves away from them. We must make a point here that the meaning of Hudayfa saying the Prophet ﷺ mentioned everything that would happen until the Day of Judgment, i.e. meaning the great trials, tribulations and signs of the hour, and not meaning every minor and major thing. Because the Prophet ﷺ spoke to them on the minbar, in some narrations it's mentioned that he spoke to them from the morning until the evening, that he spoke to them during a number of prayers, before the prayer and after the prayer, but it's not mentioned that he mentioned every single thing. Rather, the meaning of this is that he mentioned the major aspects, major events that would happen, big problems, big trials and tribulations. And that's what we should focus on as well in our discussion of the end of days. Signs that will trigger responses in us as Muslims when we see them. So we see the Muslim ummah destroying itself and we recognize this is a sign. And we see the competition in building tall buildings from a people who are poor, naked and barefooted and we see this as a sign. And we see uquq al-walidain treating our parents bad and we see this as a sign. And we see the increase of ignorance and the decrease of knowledge and we see this as a sign. And we see the people taking ignorant fools as their Islamic guides and Islamic teachers and we see this as a sign. Each one of them activates a response within us that this is one more sign. We need to repent. We need to get ready. We need to prepare ourselves for the trials and tribulations that are going to come and the hardships that are going to come. And so this is a matter of preparing and it's a matter of being ready and a matter of recognizing that there are important things and less important things. The signs of the hour in general are divided into major and minor. And uh, perhaps an evidence for this is the statement of Hudayfa radiallahu an regarding the Prophet ﷺ, from them are those which were major and from them are those which were minor. And the major signs, we will talk about them coming later on, they are those signs which come one after the other after the other and they are of a huge significance and indeed they are completely in opposition to the norms of the world and what we know like the sun rising from the west instead of the east like the Dajjal, like the descending of Isa alayhi salam like the coming out of a beast from the belly of the earth. These are all things that are extremely different from what we are used to in the normal way that the universe works. And the other thing is that they happen together, one after the other, after the other, after the other, as opposed to the minor signs, which are spaced out and are often not what we would say, khariq, something which is completely against the rules of the universe, but something that is understood as happening and sometimes they may be strange and sometimes they may not be strange but all of them are signs that lead you to the coming of the larger signs recognizing that the most important issues we should focus on are the most important of those signs and that the minor signs are there to wake you up small trials and small tests before the big test comes so these are some of the ahadith of Hudayfa in fact in Sahih Muslim if you go back to Sahih Muslim you'll find a number of other wordings which give you additional information which we don't have time to mention inshallah and as i said we're going to sort of pick and choose inshallah from sahih 
Muslim, those ahadith that are most relevant to our topic of the end of days. And inshallah, we're going to go for a break. After the break, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to look at a new hadith in a new chapter on the topic of the end of days, the coming of the hour, and the trials and tribulations that are going to lead up to it, inshallah. So stay tuned for that, inshallah, and we will speak after the break with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 32301. IBAN GB49ARAY. 3000830113230103201 sort code 30083 swift bic code arayy gb22 please confirm your contribution at admin at peace tv tv support peace tv the solution for humanity marriage or divorce what's islamic ruling solution or problem Heaven or hell? Uh, that is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. Distinguished world-famous orator who dedicated their lives to convey the message of peace came together at one platform, the International Islamic Conference, with one vision, with one mission, peace mission. I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace Mission, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, welcome back. We were talking about the hadith of Hudayfa or the many ahadith of Hudayfa radiallahu an regarding the trials and tribulations and regarding those who memorized them and those who didn't and how the companions used to be. From this, another benefit that we can take is the need of the scholars to warn the people about the upcoming trials. As the Prophet ﷺ did on that day, on one of the days from Fajr, and then after Dhuhr and after Asr and so on and so forth, each time taking the companions and explaining to them the different trials and tribulations. And there are different things that the scholars are, of course, required to explain in this. From these is to warn the people about the closeness and the nearness of these trials and tribulations, as we hope to do in this series, inshallah. From this is for the students of knowledge 
to warn people about the kinds of trials there will be and to give them information about what will happen and how it will happen according to what the Prophet Sallallahu told us and what Allah revealed to us in the Quran. And from this is to teach the people the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the methodology of escaping these trials and tribulations. All of these things are things the Prophet Sallallahu taught the companions. And then of course this hadith benefits us that we as individuals, our approach should be the same approach as the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and that the one who takes their approach and follows their approach will be saved inshallah from the trials and tribulations and the one who does not follow their approach and turns away from their way and follows a way other than the way of the believers, we will entrust him to what he has chosen, we will put him in Jahannam and what an evil destination as Allah Azza wa Jal told us in the Quran that this will be the outcome of the one who turns away and follows away other than the Sahaba in dealing with trials and tribulations in the end of times and what will happen the last of days, the end of days if we don't follow the methodology of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum then we too will end up being caught up in the fitan and end up being destroyed and end up being raised up in a place other than where they are raised up. So there's always a possibility a person may be destroyed by a trial. But if you are destroyed by it, then the best you can hope for is that you're raised up with the right niyyah as the companions radiallahu anhum had and that we want to copy and learn from them. So now we come to another hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala an regarding the general trials and tribulations that will happen in Babun Fil Fitnati Alati Tamuju Kamojil Bahar, the chapter or a chapter regarding the trial that will surge up like the waves of the sea. It will surge and rise up like the waves of the sea. And Hudayfa radiallahu an Annahu Kal Kunna عند عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه فقال أيكم تحفظ حديث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الفتنة كما قال Which of you has memorized the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about trials and tribulations exactly as he said it And this is from the encouragement of Umar for the people to study the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم And it's an indication that in the sunnah there is safety for people from trials and tribulations, if we were to only memorize and to learn it and to teach it. قَالَ فَقُلْتُ أَنَا Hudayfa said, I have. قَالَ إِنَّكَ لَجَرِي He said to him, indeed you are a brave one. Umar said, you're brave. And this is not a criticism of Hudayfa radiallahu anhu. But this is admiration from Umar that mashallah, you're brave enough to give us, you're going to be the first one to say it, to give us the answer. Kaifaqal. So tell me, what did he say about this fitna? Qala qultu. Hudayfa said, I said, Sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama yakul. Fitna tu rajuri fi ahlihi wa malihi wa nafsi. The trial of a man is in his family and in his wealth, and in his nafs, his own soul. وَوَلَدِهِ and his children. وَجَارِهِ and his neighbor. يُكَفِّرُهَا الصِّيَامُ وَالصَّلَةِ They are expiated by fasting and praying وَالصَّدَقَةِ and charity. وَالْأَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَالنَّهِي عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ and telling the people to do good and forbidding them from evil. So Hudayfa mentioned the smaller kind of daily trials that a person will endure. Because Umar said, which of you has memorized the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ about the fitna, about trials and tribulations? Umar is talking about one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, one of the big fitna and the huge trials that the Muslims will face. And Hudayfa understood from him, he's talking about the day-to-day trials. So he said the trial of a man is in his family, and in his wealth, and in himself, in his children, and in his neighbor. And these trials can be expiated, can be removed by fasting, prayer, 
giving charity, commanding good and forbidding evil. فَقَالَ عُمَرْ So Umar radiallahu anhu said, لَيْسَ هَذَا أُرِيد This is not what I want. I'm not talking about this one. إِنَّمَا أُرِيدُ أَلَّتِي تَمُوجُ كَمَوْجِ الْبَحْرِ The one that I want to talk to you about is the one that will rise up like the waves of the sea. قَالَ فَقُلْتُ مَا لَكَ وَلَهَا يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Hudayfa said, I said to him, you have nothing to do with it, O Amir al-Mu'mineen. Why are you worried about something that there is nothing to do with you and it? So Hudayfa knows what this trial is that will surge like the waves of the sea. He's heard it from the Prophet wasallam. But Umar has no concern. He says, Umar, you have no concern, O Amir al-Mu'mineen. In the Khilafah of Umar, this hadith was said, you have no concern. Between you and it, there's nothing to worry you about. إِنَّ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهَا بَابًا مُغْلَقًا Between you and it, there is a closed door. Between you and it, there is a closed door. There's something that is closed between this trial that is going to hit the Muslims and you, O Umar. قَالَ أَفَا يُكْسَرُ الْبَابُ أَمْ يُفْتَحْ Umar said, so will this door be broken? Or will it be opened? This door between me and this trial, is it going to be smashed down? Or is it going to be opened? قَالَ قُلْتُ لَا بَلْ said, I said, no, it's going to be broken. So then it became clear that these companions knew that this door was something stopping the trials from hitting the Muslims. So they asked Hudayfa about it. هَلْ كَانَ عُمَرُ يَعْلَمُ مَنِ الْبَابِ did Umar know who the door was? قَالَ نَعَمْ He said, yes. كَمَا يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ دُونَ غَدٍ اللَّيْلَ Just like he knows that night precedes the day or that the night and the day, they come after one another. إِنِّي حَدَّثْتُهُ حَدِيثًا لَيْسَ بِأَغَالِيطٍ Hudayfa narrated to them a hadith that contained nothing fabricated in it. قَالَ فَهِبْنَا Nas'ala Hudayfa. They said, Fahibna and Nas'ala Hudayfa Manil Bab. We were shy to ask Hudayfa who the door was. Hudayfa was the secret keeper of the Prophet. It's not an easy person to get information from. They were shy to ask Hudayfa. They had not understood. They knew a great trial was going to afflict the Muslims, a great evil. They knew something was stopping it from happening. They knew that it would be smashed down and not opened, but they didn't know anything more about it than that. And they were shy to ask Hudayfa, who is this door? So they said, فَقُلْنَا masruq." We said to Masruq, one of the tabi'een, one of the most beloved of the tabi'een to the companions, رضي الله عنهم ورحمه الله تعالى, سَلْهُ You ask him. فَسَأَلَهُ فَقَالَ Umar. They asked him and he said, the door was Umar. So Hudayfa knew that Umar would be assassinated and that this would be one of the trials that would open the door to many, many great severe trials crashing like the waves of the sea. The waves of the sea, when they come up, it's not one trial. One trial breaks down the defenses, one wave comes and breaks down the next and the next and the next until the people begin to drown. So this told us that these trials are going to come one after the other, after the other, after the other. But right now, these trials are blasting against a defense which is repelling these trials. And that defense was Umar. Umar knew this hadith. Umar knew that he was the barrier that was stopping these trials from hitting the Muslims by the permission of Allah. And he knew that he would be killed and destroyed, not that he would be removed from power and be able to come back again and fight for the Muslims, but that he would be killed. Umar radiallahu an knew this, and Hudayfa knew this as the secret keeper of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the companions knew that a trial would come and something was stopping this trial. And when that something went away, the trials would begin to hit the Muslims like the waves of the sea crashing into the shore one after another, after another, after another, each one greater and larger than the other, each one getting a bit further and destroying a bit more. 
Umar knew that he was the door. And he knew that it wouldn't be that they would imprison him and he could fight back. Or they would remove him from power and he could find his way back again. But that he would be killed. And this is really the beginning of the decline and the beginning of the destruction of the Ummah piece by piece and phase by phase. Starting with the death of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh. And indeed after that many of the minor signs happened one after another after another and many trials and tribulations that were foretold and much of the killing that was foretold began after the death of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh. So this is like an introduction for us to begin talking about these trials and tribulations and begin talking about the end of days starting right back at the time of the death of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. That's all we have time for in this episode. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.